Projection designers are sort of uh, mad scientists of sorts. Theater is, is alchemy. It's costume, it's scenic elements, it's lighting, it's performing, it's um, you know makeup, it's hair, it's all these things put together and each of them individually cannot do the same thing that they do as a group. Projection design at its best is augmenting that situation as opposed to uh, projection design at its worst, which is window dressing. I went to college to study biochemistry, the pre-med, and um, didn't show up at my biochemistry midterm. I had always been designing and directing theater and performing in theater at that point, but I switched my major to theater. And uh, I came to New York and saw Brace Up, um, which is a Wooster Group show, and that show changed my life. You know, I realized that um, theater was a, potentially a much more complicated and uh, aesthetically driven art form, uh, and it really allowed me to sort of explode my, my notion of what theater was. I started as a lighting designer and a set designer mostly, uh, but had always been interested in sort of non-linear narrative theater. So I'd studied as a director in college and went on to do a lot of work in experimental theater, places like the Wooster Group and Richard Foreman and with smaller companies like the Collapsible Giraffe and Cynthia Hopkins. And I just sort of took any job that would come and, you know, slowly by little by little, it just, uh, they kept coming. And then now it's, you know, it's 20 years later. I think the last time I made a five-year plan was 1994. This is welded, oh. either aluminum or steel. Uh -huh. So that's the balcony, and then this shit goes up into the, and for my money, this goes up into the uh, grid. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it doesn't want to look quite as douchey as this. <laughs> Understood. Yeah. But that's, that's an idea, right? Okay. And then below, it's full width RP that goes behind those stairs, too. Mm -hmm. um, In a lot of ways, projection design is a, is a young art. It wasn't until very recently, like the last three years, maybe, that there were degrees in projection design, and so as a result, historically, we all kind of came from other fields. Some came from filmmaking, some came from lighting design, some came from scenic design. And so we all sort of have these uh, divergent skills. I think what I was very fortunate to have was, in my background in non-narrative theater, was a, a sense of the story of the image and the story of the picture in its own right. So I create these, or I try to create narratives within the image alone, separate from whatever sort of linear narrative that might be existing in, this, in the script. And so the, the image tells a story by itself. The first change that happened in my work was I stopped using slide projectors and we started using video projectors. Going to a digital workflow was slow and tedious, and uh, there was a long time that it was still faster to work in analog. So a lot of the early work that I did, we were still shooting on tape and having some computer-driven media, uh, but the biggest issue with all of that was time. You know, you did not, the time to render media digitally and, you know, edit it and then re-render it, it was just, it was ridiculous. I would rather, you know, use the fucking, it was much, that was much more fun and effective. Um, and I was better at it still, you know, like the, the little half inch decks with the wheels and the you know, that was, that was good. And what I find now is that people a lot younger than me who 
never really shot to tape or to film. Their concept of, of a workflow is very different than mine. A lot of why I came to Projection 2 is my interest in optic, optics and my interest in 19th century magic and how a lot of uh, 19th century illusion was, was optical illusion how you use mirrors and glass and things like that to transform reality. So I, I kind of love lenses and I love making effects with lenses and I love doing things in a very um, hands-on way. And so if I can ever go out and shoot something, I'm going to do that before I'm going to fabricate it in After Effects. And you know, I, I know people now who are younger than me and they would much rather create clouds, create water, create um, smoke in After Effects than, than to shoot it. And I just, that's just not how my brain works. Portrait of Solitude, which is a show that I'm working on right now that uh, is coming up. A lot of the media that I'm working on is all for, it's supposed to look like it's handmade. Um, and so all of that's essentially silhouette cutouts and then it's gonna be, I guess what you would call puppetry. Animation, some stop, some moving animation, then some of that is then shot on a green screen and treated to look like it was made on an overhead projector or uh, shadow play stuff. And so the hope is that everything within the context of that piece sort of has this consistent look to it. Computer animation is, it is what it is, you know, it's, it's useful uh, for certain things. Bring it on, there's a lot of animation in there that's clearly computer generated and, it, and in the context of that piece, there's nothing wrong with that. Bad computer animation? Yeah, get it out of here, but, you know, unless you're doing a show about Atari. We started working on the piece. A lot of the storyboards and the um, mock-ups that I was making were, you know, sort of naive. They were, they had a sort of like, uh, they were too childlike. And basically, over the course of going through these sort of different versions of things, I remembered that when you're in high school, you, you don't think you're a child. Um, <laughs> and once we kind of figured out that the aesthetic of that piece was not a naive and childlike aesthetic it started the show started to make more sense you know in commercial theater it's it's in a lot of ways it's the same as anything else we're all you know we're all in there making theater so the notion that it is uh, you know only about making money that's from my standpoint as a designer it doesn't matter once you're making the theater it's you're making it the same way you make any other things you know so Ah, pin sticking into the table. Scratching my grandma's table, Simon. Where's the coaster? I was scratching my, I, I brought the coaster up. <laughs> <laughs> I have a thing about coasters. I think the knowledge that one gains from experience is you shorten the gap between understanding what's in your mind and what happens on the stage. Um, in a lot of ways, you know, especially in projection, the, the, the image in your mind is very, very different than how it exists on stage. 
in some senses, I find it really useful to use scale models uh, of, of the set to start trying things on. So if you can build a model in half inch, you get a pretty, pretty good scale um, scale impression of the stage, and you can start working with with the images and seeing how they work. Projection has changed the theater experience. I think, by and large, it has changed it to theater's detriment. My problem with, with projection design are when it's when it gets in the way. You know, nine times out of ten, projection design does not need to be there, uh, and I feel like it fails the theatrical experience when it becomes a sort of flashy bells and whistles. Um, you know, there's a term in rock and roll design that's called flash and trash, and it's just like you're just putting crap up there to make it flashy. Ultimately, our work has to stand next to a live person. Um, and and the, way that a, the way that the audience sees projected image or image on LED walls or on TVs in the context of a larger frame that has live people, you know, the person will never win. They will always, the audience will always watch a screen before they watch a person. I find also that frequently that means that as a projection designer, you sort of have to, you know, shut up, uh, visually shut up, while, while the play <laughs> unfolds before you. I think like what inspires me, I like people who take objects or ideas that are very common or very familiar and manage to uh, shift the lens, shift the perspective from which you're looking at them. You know, and I think in some ways that's what projection design at its best is. It's, it's the capacity to slightly shift the perspective of a viewer just enough so that they can see a different, um, you know, a different angle on the story. Uh, or a different perspective on the world.